Hi, in this video I'll talk about inclined plane. It's a more complex application of Newton's third law and therefore I'll also speak about the first law and the second law. Therefore I'll be covering all the three laws together because this uh, inclined plane system has got a lot of different kinds of forces acting. The first thing to do is to understand what's happening here. The block is moving up, it's pulled by a rope. The rope is wound around the pulley that's rotating on top and on the other side there is a mass that's hanging. The mass provides the force on the rope and the rope transmits the force to the block and the block moves up. Now let's look at what are the forces acting in a different view. So you have the weight mg acting vertically downwards towards the center of the earth. So the block is attracted towards the center of the earth and the block also attracts the earth towards itself as per the gravitational law and therefore they form an action reaction pair. The block and the inclined plane do not form an action reaction pair because they don't attract each other with the force n or mg cos theta which is a component of mg uh, acting on the inclined plane. We'll come to a derivation of all these forces but what's important to understand is that for third law to be applicable the two objects must be different and the forces must be acting on those two objects if both mg and n the normal reaction are acting on the same object in this case a block therefore they do not form an action reaction pair we will also come to the first law here the block is not moving up and down perpendicular to the plane. Therefore, it's in a state of rest as far as that particular axis is concerned. I mean the axis along n. Therefore, it acts as per the first law where there is no external force trying to pluck it out of the plane. In this side view, you can see the animation and how it really works. Now, if you take the ball as a system, the wooden ball on the right hand side, you can see that it's moving down keep the motion aside for a time being whether it moves or not the ball is attracted towards the center of the earth because it's got a weight and the ball also attracts the earth towards itself as per the law of gravitation therefore the ball and the earth form an action reaction pair as per Newton's third law however the ball and the rope the yellow rope that's hanging they do not form an action reaction pair there are a lot of forces there to be resolved and we'll look into those forces they may even be equal and opposite but still they may not form an action reaction pair in the sense of third law so what do we do so sometimes we have to use the first law and when the things start moving we have to find acceleration as per the second law and that's the trick so the first law will take care when things are at rest or in uniform motion the second law will take care when things are moving and having an acceleration and when there is a net force. So now maybe we should also look at what are the forces uh, here. So there's a rope tension and it goes right around the pulley and comes down. So the rope tension will be the resultant tension of all the forces. Now if we take the brick base as a system, the one that's below, it's, you, know, you can see the brick structure. What happens there? So the block has its own weight, mg acting down. The wooden inclined plane will of course have its own weight acting downwards. The pulley will have some weight and the ball of course has a weight. Except for the rope which is considered as massless. So all these weights are acting on that brick base, that structure. So the brick structure is not accelerating, it's not going down into the earth, it's stationary. So therefore it pushes back on all of them with a normal reaction which will be perpendicular to that yellow arrow. Still, they do not form an action-reaction pair. They are just equal and opposite forces, as per the first law, where they are not accelerating. Now, let's deviate a little bit and look at all the forces and how to work with them. So, the mg always acts downwards towards the center of the earth. So, depending on the angle of that plane, let's say it's theta, if we draw a geometry and a triangle, you will get a normal to the plane, which will be the base of that triangle, which is mg cos theta. Of course, mg cos theta will be smaller than mg. Therefore, the plane pushes back 
on that block with a normal reaction equal to mg cos theta. And therefore, the frictional force which is acting back, F is equal to mu n, adjusts itself according to that n. So all the other forces are secondary forces which adjust themselves. The mg sin theta is a perpendicular part of that triangle. Therefore, it acts backward. So coming to the second law of motion, the pulling force which is acting above that uh, block will move the block upwards only if the upward force is greater than the backward forces. So that's very simple. Find the resultant force is the pulling force minus mg sin theta minus mu mg cos theta. And that resultant force is the one which is acting on the rope and which is also acting on the wooden ball. And we'll come to that in subsequent chapters too. Thank you. I hope this was clear. Have a great day.